Hey guys, what is happening in your world? Welcome to a early spring, rainy day in California. What do I got going on? Well, I've got a couple of projects going on. I've got a guitar I'm making out of a 1932 Mississippi license plate. This one is going to be cool. I've got some good relics to put on it and whatever. And I think whenever I get into the root stuff like this of building a guitar out of a coffee can or something, I start looking around at the different stuff I have in stock. And that kind of stuff makes me less wary of the junky, really junky projects I'll take on. Like, look at this one. Um, I don't do flat tops much and I really am not into solid body guitars but when we look at these tuners and the headstock on this one with Fender Newporter it was actually made in California the neck is really high because everything is collapsed most people wouldn't give this time a day I am actually going to have a look at it a lot of structural work here you see that but we all know that I am just a sucker for these arch tops that virtually have no bracing on the back. There'll be some type of a thin wood or a piece of fabric or something. Uh, this is a Rex. It's coming apart. It has cracks everywhere. You see that up on the back there. And I'm going to have to take the back of it off to fix things because the tone bars when you can stick your finger in here and feel there's a tone bar running here and it's telltale signs of the bridge and the top collapsing and cracks starting at the F hole right here and that kind of stuff. Anyway, today's topic is I am going to talk about how to make cleats. You've heard me talk about cleating and I've just given a cursory look um, I'm going to actually show you how to make some cleats out of some stock material and then you're going to catch within there some hints about what do you do when you have an arched surface and the crack goes all the way to the edge. What's more important to fix, the edge or the radius, the curvature here? We're going to touch on that, but I have been working on anything you might again see me working on something that involves a license plate and a simple box up to some orchestral instruments and I have been working out of a couple shops and we're going to travel to one of them right now. All right guys we have the opportunity here to look at sometimes we're repairing cracks in arch tops and uh, smaller instruments but we have an opportunity here to look at how a cleat is done on a really old base top so you'll see that in this area up here there's some of the work been done there's several different revisions over the years of how this has been done but this is what we're after right here you can see that the grain of the cleat runs perpendicular to the crack. There's some thought that you would run it diagonal or something like that, but I'm not going to question the source. And you can see up at the top, up there, there has been some repair of cracks that get gaped out and affected how the body fits together outside of the concave that happens when you arch instruments. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of spruce here. Let me zoom back out. And there we are. We've got a rule and we're going to cut copies of those cleats that we saw there up at the top out of this remembering that the grain is going to run perpendicular. So, what do you know? This is as wide as the rule I'm using. I made a mark there. And then, of course, it's right at the 20 millimeter mark. And so we will make a mark here every 
20 millimeters apart. I love using the metric system for this because I don't know how many thousandths this is. All right, you can see that this is pretty handy. It marks out this way and this way. Um, we're going to cut this along this line and we got a lot of cleats here. We want to remember that each one of these is going to be beveled like a pyramid. You see that? And so when they're all together, we're going to take the time to do the end and all the edges together. That way when we cut these, we only have to do two of these and risk life and limb and fingernails on the old belt sander over here. Okay, when you're doing wider cleats, you really don't have to mark every one off like this. You just set your table up. This is a nice little band so you just set your table up for the mark. Like so. And get everything nice and square. There we go. And then just put everything up against the fence and move everything along as you go, like so. Okay, we've got some square cleats cut, like so. We're gonna need a little bit longer ones. The technique is kind of the same. We're just gonna use the belt to make sure the ends are square. Now, little trick, if you've got one end sticking up a little bit, put that end towards the back so the belt doesn't grab it. And now we're just gonna take the edge of the belt and use our finger to mark a spot to bevel the long sides down and then we'll go back to here to doing the short sides just like we did this let's give it a whirl All right, guys, so don't try to cut corners on something 
that you're going to make a quick cleat or two when you set up do a handful of them because you'll put them away and you'll be ready to go the next time the thing about this kind of stuff is if you're working on other people's instruments you really got to ask yourself am i going to charge somebody for making cleats am i going to charge people for work that i'm actually doing on their guitar so here we go this is cool to be able to work on something this big and this old and I'm ready to go with a bunch of cleats. So I, I do want to kind of show you a couple of things. I called something out to you at the top of the episode and that was, do you see the spot right here? This was open, a piece missing and you want to deal with all of these cracks that go all the way to the edge of the soundboard of the guitar or the bass or cello, whatever it is. And you want to address these before you do anything else. Because if you go ahead and start fixing the cracks up here, you'll never be able to get the radius back of the curve. See, this is curved and it all wants to jump apart. So, we would want to address this here and cleat very close to the edge and get that stabilized like so the cleat cannot be in the way of where the body goes and you want to remember on arch topped instruments there is a actually a drop down a concave here so what we want to do is be very patient get up underneath things and then I would take a piece of this brown tape here and kind of get things padded up back here where I can get a cleat in a good spot right there once that's stabilized here and here it's more likely that things will cut back together if i put pressure here there's a lot of broken stuff here so this is a job that requires different size cleats with a consistent level of patience which is something i'm not known for okay guys i am back to work on the soundboard of this really old bass i don't know what it is it's probably better that i don't but you can tell there are a number of splits and cracks and I cut a bunch of cleats and did the pyramid thing that we always do you see there but the trick here is some of these splits run all the way to the edge and to the edge of the F hole now there's a radius here so let's say I were to try and figure out I'm going to glue the, the, the cleats into the radius first. What would happen is the ends would never close. So let me show you what's going on here. I've got this clamp here. Now you notice when I release that, this opened up a little bit. Now I'm going to release this one. And you can see that this is literally ready to come apart. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to take and put a little bit of tape uh, here because I'm going to protect the wood. Not that it's in the best shape already, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. And these, these clamps here are pretty cool. That's for sure. They're old. I don't even know where you'd get them anymore. But I'm going to put this through this F hole here and come up here and I'm going to get this on this cleat that's already cut loose you see that so I'm going to pop this up and get that above there and then when I when I push this forward like this I'm going to screw this one down this might take a couple of shots at it to get it nice and flat but we'll set this up like that and I am going to take this side here and take it down I'm, now I'm going to clamp at the edge because now I'm going to clamp at the edge because this needs to be stable but I can't put a cleat here so I'm going to go ahead and get this clamp here 
and get it where there it is right there that closed up fairly good there we go now you can tell that the radius isn't right but this is sealing up right here so now I'm going to go back and adjust that other one remember if you get the ends in the right spot when you're flexing the rest of it like so the radius will pop too so here we go yeah look at that it's sealed right up now I can take something and bump the camera I can take and adjust this see that wants to go down a little bit and then I can close that up that closed up nice right there you've got to be patient with this and that's not something I know a lot about that is for sure now I've got something over here that I can put under here to hold the weight of that clamp because if you don't do that see it's flexing there I can take this rag here and put it right under there and get that right so I'm going to adjust this back and forth a little bit and get everything to sit down at both clamps and then I'm going to take some hot hide glue and by the way I bought bought some good hot hide glue and then we're going to put a cleat right here that's running perpendicular to the split and we're going to keep it away from the edge where the sides glue on now I want to show you something this wood is very very dry and so if I just go ahead and put some hide glue on here it's going to just suck up the hide glue so what I want to do is I want to get ahead of it a little bit and I want to put some water and it's warm so it's the same temperature as the hide glue because it's what I heat it in but we're going to just put some water on here and that way the wood becomes is absorptive the right word and I've got some weight here so you can see when I pull this up watch this right here you see that that's about as close as I'm gonna get it there I'm gonna pull this rag out a little bit it's got to be just right again remember all I'm worried about right now is what's happening right here the rest of it I can flex up there so we're gonna put that right there we're gonna let that soak in a little bit and my hide glue is hot let me sacrifice everything here to show you look how clear this stuff is this is European stuff and you see how it drifts off and it's gonna dry a lot nicer and clearer and be stronger than that stuff I've been using in the blue bottle or the brown bottle excuse me so I put that there I'm gonna paint this on the corners this stuff has a very distinct smell and it's fairly expensive but it's been processed to get all the impurities out of it okay main thing here is I want to make sure that it's not near that edge and I got to kind of look at where the concaves are and that kind of thing like so now I've got some pieces of tape here I could just as well use binding tape but go along the top side here and let it run down in there like so and then I'm going to take my tape here and put it over here where there is no glue touch the top of that and then pull it there like binding tape then I'm going to leave it alone all right this one up here we're going to be ever ever so careful doing this so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get again some water I've rinsed out the brush we're going to get some water in here hot water to 
get all of this together. And what we're going to try to do is re-glue this cleat here and then put another one here. And you can see there's a pretty sizable crack there. One that you could put a guitar string envelope flap in. We don't want that. So I am going to take a long piece of this tape and I've already kind of checked out what this wants to do. So I'm going to put that over here like so. And I'm going to take this. Don't use duct tape or anything like that. So we're going to bind that there. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of pull this into shape. It wants to sit down just a little bit and that right you see how that whole thing is trying to come loose right there so it wants a little bit of downward pressure okay you see that so I can put something up here to kind of weigh this down not too heavy okay that's dropping right into place so I'm going to take my hide glue here we're going to let this run right underneath there, like so. I can see it flowing in there. Okay. I don't want a ton of hide glue slopped all over the place. So I'm going to clean that up a little bit. Again, the stuff being hot, and as refined as, as it is, it will just run in there. Like so. Now, again, everything has to be perpendicular. So, that one's going to look good right about there. There we go. That's turned the right way like so and I'm going to drop my clamp in there and we are going to get it lined up there there we go and we're going to leave it alone. Again, this is tedious, tedious work, but we're dealing with something that's very old. Let's leave it alone. Okay, while I have the hide glue heated up today, I want to point out that I had put some cleats on to fix a crack that went all the way from here jumped a little bit about the width of that top there over to here and was trying to break off like this one we just did so i glued a cleat on here to stabilize the end and this one over here which i'm not going to move because we have this haphazard waiting thing but there is ever slightly a radius here where if i glue a flat cleat on this area here where there was one in the past the edges being flat are going to push that up. We don't want that. So I'm going, to, I'm going to identify the perpendicular grain. And I'm going to take a sanding block like so. And I am just going to not take my fingers off on the belt sander. But I'm going to knock that edge down just a little bit. Which creates kind of a concave on the underside of this cleat you see that where those two sides kind of curl up you see how that works and then I'm gonna place it right there and as long as I can get that to seat where the the center part is what's sticking that's good and again if you're doing a couple of these or a few of these at a time you're going to save yourself some time also save the sawdust that's coming off here so again the grain is running this way so i am just going to 
hold that flat and knock down the edge again use the service Don't sit here and go like this just a couple times and then we're going to go over here a couple times and you see that center part you can see in the light that center part is up a little bit higher than those edges and we're just going to go in where these other cleats were like so and i'm going to put three there you can see the edges that we took down just a little bit because of the slight curve are going to be that way like so now they may be up just a tad because they are a little bit higher and we can let the capillary action of the glue take care of that and then as always my friend the tape we're going to push this down not too much pull it over there and pull it over there and the top part sticking up a little bit keeps that tape away from being glued down by our hide glue two more and we don't want to slop it all over we want to make sure there's nothing there like a pile of sawdust or anything like that perpendicular edges cut down just a little bit to help that radius be what it wants to be and then while we're in here we can tell that some of these have flexed and if they appear to be okay and that crack hasn't opened up we're just going to let the glue run down there and follow where it wants to go clean it up just a tad take our tape again using the top that's like a pyramid so I put that on there first and then get the edge to sit down out here now we are going to leave this alone because these two ends need to dry once that happens we are going to be able to go along and fix that crack and that one there all right guys so hopefully you took away from that if you're going to pull the back off of one of these get the crack stabilized at the edge be careful where you glue on the curving especially if you've got a dip down uh, on where you're transitioning from the arch to the edge get that but get that stabilized because until you do if the ends not stabilized you can't get that radius to glue back up anyway next thing I have to tell you this guys if you are selling guitars are people buying them because you're good or are they buying them because you're cheap I hear a couple of horror stories coming in uh, to me where people get guitars at a good price there's nothing wrong with that they put good parts on them they build uh, what do they call it parts casters or whatever else is going on in that world I don't know anything about but they'll get something together and then they'll sell it and then somebody's coming back uh, two weeks or months later hey I noticed this wasn't right and that wasn't right and so how do you build in that you're basically going to have to give somebody a refund at some point how do you do that and protect yourself I know that some of the online guitar sales things they always side with the buyer um, so I, I'm not saying that's a bad thing but if the minute somebody complains because they got drunk and bought an instrument and that uh, you know their wife is causing them to have buyer's remorse that's a whole world I don't even like to deal with my um, advice to you is if you're going to sell a guitar have the people look at it and hold it and, and, and if you try to sell it offline what's that loud motorcycle I swear I'm never going to get sound insulation in my shed because what would my channel be without that Putnam's yeah without that anyway where was I um, 
the people who get a hold of my guitars, they know what they are because there's usually a dozen episodes about every monstrosity uh, made up something or other I've done inside of them. But on the other side of that, think about what it costs when you pick up a guitar like this for very cheap. It wasn't very good to begin with and without a lot of structural work, it's still never going to be any good and it's going to be a novel instrument to begin with. I don't see anybody playing a whole concert with this. They might pull it out and you know do something to kind of show off a little bit that they can play junk and I've always said that. But when you start nickel and diming people for building something and I'm going to put this back together and it might be worth four thousand dollars because the hour and time I've put into it, the hours and time, but it's certainly not worth that. So if you're repairing guitars, don't charge people for building a template you're going to use on 15 other guitars. And also the whole thing about the cleats are here. To set up cutting cleats is going to take you some time. Don't do that 15 times for 15 different people. Kind of figure out what your market is. If you've got a few of these in stock, you know they're going to need cleats at some point. So cut them, be efficient with your time, and be fair with your pricing to your customers. And most of all, be fair in your pricing to you because you're the one making money or getting burned out on your passion because you're not. That said, give me a like. Expect that you're going to see a little bit of this orchestral stuff coming in here and there mixed in with the licensed plates. Thanks for watching. I will see you soon.